You're listening to LibraryCast, your library podcast brought to you by Somerset Libraries. On this edition of LibraryCast, we're delighted to welcome Helen Chalner, CEO of Literature Works. Let's hear a story from you, Helen, and Literature Works. Tell us about Once Upon a Time, there was an idea that created Literature Works. What is the Literature Works story? Well, it predates me, actually, although Literature Works hasn't been going, it's relatively young as an organisation um, and actually has its roots at the home of the poet Charles Causley in Launceston called Cypress Well, which is a magical name for a house and a building. But in fact, it's a very modest terraced house on a hillside in Launceston. It's where Charles Causley grew up and lived all his life. Um, and Literature Works was... Uh, I believe, a piece of research and project management that took place there, looking at how could that house be saved for literature lovers and kept as a marker of Charles Causey and his life for Launceston as well. And the people that were involved in that, somehow it all evolved into becoming literature work. So Cypress Well is still there and the Causey Trust run that now as a literature centre and a hosting place for residencies uh, and there's a festival in Launceston and Literature Works evolved into what it now is and became a charity in its own right in 2009 and then a few years later gained core funding from Arts Council England and what we do is we are we're called a literature development agency which sounds very dry but basically we're a small arts organisation covering the whole of the southwest region which is a big region and we are all about giving people opportunities to get involved with creative writing and reading and explore their own creative writing ideas and that takes all kinds of forms so we work with schools we work with young people we run our own writing courses master classes and live literature events But we also partner a lot with other organisations. So we get involved with projects that use literature in a socially engaged way to counteract things like loneliness, isolation. We have a lovely project called National Memory Day, which is about training groups of local poets to then run these fabulous interactive workshops with poetry and reminiscence in memory cafes. So we do that in partnership with the Alzheimer's Society. We run a half day training for the poets where the Alzheimer's Society provide a bit of insight into living with memory loss and dementia. And then we place those poets in memory cafes and they they read poems and they create poems with the group. So that's an example of socially engaged use of the art form. We're part of a kind of literature ecology, if you like, a landscape with some very visible landmarks such as publishers, booksellers, agents, creative writing MAs, there are lots of those now, and university courses. And then there are a network of agencies like ours. There's one in every region of of England. uh, And we're connecting with all of them but we're kind of like an alternative way in if you like and we because we're arts council funded uh, we have a remit to bring in those people that might not feel entitled or have been born or brought up in an environment where they read and they think they can be a writer so we're always looking at reaching people that are more on the edges or on the margins and thinking about diversity, um, working with older people. That's what we do. What can Literature Works do to facilitate a welcome to all members of our community? Well, that's a really big subject. And I think there are lots of ways in. There are lots of routes or moments that could spark that interest. But I do think... The way that we work in partnership, for example, has borne fruit quite often. So we would work with a local grassroots organisation and they, for example, might already have their group 
of people who are in recovery from addiction, say, that meet every week or every fortnight. And they might already have done some very first work with writing a poem to express their feelings, say. And then we might partner with them to take that to the next step and do a bit more writing. And over time, with the right person leading the group, hope that those people start to think of themselves as writers. That's an example. For young writers, and actually for people of all ages, the form that the art form takes as well. So things like spoken word poetry and performance poetry, they're very close to stand-up comedy, which is hugely popular, and we see it on our televisions. So I think they can often be a, a way in because it's still literature. It's the enjoyment of words and creative expression through words, but it's not based on the page. So for people who might not read so much or might struggle with writing for whatever reason, that's more accessible. As we all know, catching people young is really important. So we've done some things, one of our a program that we're very involved in at the moment in Exeter, um, at Exeter Custom House on the Quay side. Uh, we ran for our pilot program a session of what you might call bounce and rhyme, which was uh, a writer who'd done a lot of work with under fives in the building, telling stories, reading stories. But part of what she does is also to have available a whole load of glue and glitter and paper and making and things which combine with the storytelling and the words to capture the interest of those under fives and their parents. You're listening to Library Cast, brought to you by Somerset Libraries. And I'm talking with Helen Challoner, the CEO of Literature Works. I asked Helen, are there any other ways that Literature Works, libraries can reach out to members of the community. I don't think there's one great way in, but I think when literature works with other art forms, it can be very effective as well. So there are lots of fantastic projects where say literature's work with the visual arts um, and digital activity can combine words, music, visuals very effectively. I mean, I know my a personal anecdote, my older brother never read, I read all the time. He never read, but he was really hugely into music and he was mad about the jam, which ages me and him quite a bit. But he was an avid fan of the jam, the band in the late 70s, early 80s. And when and he read the NME. So I suppose he did read that, but he didn't read books. And the NME ran a, an interview with Paul Weller in which he said that he loved the novels of Colin McInnes who wrote these, this series of novels set in Notting Hill in the 1950s. And they made a film of one of them that David Bowie was in. I've forgotten what it's called now. Um, anyway, my brother immediately went off and bought all the books of Colin McInnes and read them all and then never stopped reading from then onwards. So I think it's about a spark. I think it's about being aware of how things can come across and remembering that we're in this world we love books and literature and writing and reading tell us a little bit about some of the projects that you're very proud of that you've actually achieved and the results that those projects have delivered for our communities in the southwest of england we're very proud of word on tour which took talented writers to the doorsteps of local communities in their local library and it's specifically targeted not exclusively, but a lot of locations where there isn't much other cultural provision. So there might not be an art centre or a theatre, but there is a library. And it deliberately, those events were held in the evenings and we had lighting and where we could, we had a glass of wine. If not, we had a cup of tea. We were trying to create the feeling of a kind of evening out, if you like, and a live literature evening event. That was fabulous. We were really proud of that. What we're doing with National Memory Day, the poetry and reminiscence, I particularly, that is quite a, a heartfelt one for me because we've run the training sessions and then delivered these clusters of activity in memory cafes throughout Cornwall, 
twice in Plymouth, in Exeter, in Devon, in Torbay. We've trained close to 200 poets to do this. I was interested to find out what Literature Works is currently working on, so I asked Helen. At the moment we're focusing a lot on a project in Exeter. We're delighted that Exeter is now a UNESCO City of Literature. That was announced in October. We wrote that bid on behalf of a steering group in Exeter. We won the contract to write the bid on behalf of Exeter as to why it should be a UNESCO City of Literature and it was successful. And it's based on an idea that um, um, there's a thing called the Exeter Book, which is a collection of Anglo-Saxon poetry and riddles that is a thousand years old and is held at the cathedral and is actually a UNESCO World Heritage treasure. Um, we wrote the bid based on the, the idea that that Exeter book represents 1,000 years of unbroken reading and writing, creative writing in Exeter. Some of it's quite highbrow religious poetry of, as you'd expect, of the Anglo-Saxon era. But then a lot of the content is these riddles, which are still current. We're running this programme at Exeter Custom House on the key side called Keywords, which is a two-year programme that we're doing as a partnership with Exeter Canal and Key Trust, who are the charity developing that key side and trying to make it a place that lots of people can come and enjoy, which it already is, in fact. But they want us to develop that historic building as a hub for literature. So Keywords is offering all kinds of the kind of stuff that we've been talking about that's really aimed at something for everyone and opening up the lovely world of literature in lots of ways. With so much time arranging online activities and projects within the communities, I wondered if Helen had time to do any writing herself. I do write a bit. Yeah, yeah, I do write a little bit. This is what I'm reading. Girl, Woman, Other. That's a brilliant book. And yeah. that can be found actually on the Somerset Library's uh, e-books on, for Black History Month. That book is featured. I thoroughly enjoyed that book. Am amazing book. Um, and one that really says that there's a future, isn't there, in young writing from all people's backgrounds. It's such an exciting read. Absolutely. Dream. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm glad you're reading. Um, and in terms of writing, have you written anything yourself? I've always written a little bit, but not in a very, I've never been that confident about it, I think. I've always been a reader. I mean, I've been a reader since I could first learn to read and that, there's been no stopping me. Books have been a great, a kind of consolation and lifesaver and a, and a way into so many other worlds and lives for me always. Um, but I, um, there's a brilliant essayist and novelist called Lily Dunn, who actually, Lily is a great example of someone that's done work that's socially engaged. She's edited an anthology that's coming out from Unbound next year called A Wild and Precious Life. And it's um, writing by people that are in recovery from either addiction or alcoholism. And it's life writing, uh, which I'm looking forward very much to reading. So. Lily runs something called London Lit Lab and she's done lots of tutoring courses about writing memoir or creative nonfiction. She did one for keywords and it was one of our digital offerings because it was after lockdown. It was a short five week course about writing from life and memoir. And I participated and found it brilliant. And in fact, I'm now taking part in another course that Lily's running, not for keywords, but it's online because of the current situation. This one's more about essay writing and there's been a flourishing of essay writing in recent years as a form. It's kind of coming back. Um, and in fact, a lot of women writing essays. So it's a hybrid form and it's an area that really interests me, how you write from life and from your personal experience. And you don't, it's not fiction as such, but it often uses the techniques of fiction as a way into memory. And it often uses the themes, the thematics of fiction to express your life experience through a theme. So literature works because, how could you answer that question? 
Well, we are creatures of stories, aren't we? We have our stories that we tell or don't tell. Our life is a story. There's not always a neat beginning, middle and end, but we, we do all have stories or narratives within us and we are creatures of expression. We use words, stories are made of words. We use music, music's also made of words quite often, not always. And I think the telling of our stories and listening to other people's stories or the reading of them, the hearing of them, fundamental to the human condition and experience and will never ever stop, whether it's through creation myths and religion or through rap or hip hop or picture books or animations or novels or poetry. It's always there, isn't it? To find out more about the work of Literature Works, why not visit their webpage, which is literatureworks.org.uk. You've been listening to LibraryCast, brought to you by Somerset Libraries. Bringing you libraries from home.